Um, I'm, I'm just gonna get right into it. There's no intro for this. I'm just gonna start. Um, I have always prided myself on being open and candid and honest because for me, vulnerability is courage and it's strength. And I think that when you're vulnerable, it gives room for you to connect to people and give people a safe space. And I claim to be this advocate for Black Lives Matter and wanted to dismantle our corrupt racist system. And I still do believe that because I firmly will always believe that Black Lives Matter, but it doesn't sit right with me to continue advocating for these things if I don't address my history and how I have contributed to it. I have always and only ever wanted to make a safe space for everybody and I want to make sure I don't want somebody to have like to look at one of my socials or think of me and have to wonder if I value their life or not. That's just not That's not how I want it to be and that's not how it should be. If I really want to earn being an ally and really, really advocate for the things that I do care about, I need to use the platform that I have um, and talk about this um, openly. It is so disingenuine for me to be posting about Black Lives Matter and all of that knowing that I've had my fair share of fuck ups. It just does not sit right with me. I want to be candid about my faults and my mistakes and show that I am making steps to be a better person because I do not want to be that ignorant girl that I was that was living in her privilege bubble. Um, I don't want to be her and I'm not her anymore and I want to continue to make sure that I am not her. I can't be better in the future if I don't address my past. I, I, can't, I don't want to do it quietly because that's not how I'm going to learn. A few weeks ago, I watched an IGTV. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen. And I wrote down in my journal what she said, and it was called, If I Really Want to Be an Ally. And so I wrote these down. What are the things I've ignored or that I've assumed? The things that I've let go and didn't say anything about? What parts of myself have supported this? Be vocal. Call things out with your friends and family. There's not a black person there to do it for you. Be that person. Use your voice. You can't be scared to speak out. You can't worry what people are going to think about you. It's not enough to be sympathetic. Get uncomfortable. And this last week, these last few weeks, I have had the uncomfortable conversations with myself. And it got really uncomfortable. And I want to talk about it. I have benefited from privilege my entire life. I grew up in Lansing, Michigan, and I was always told that the middle school and high school of Lansing was deemed unsafe, and it was always like, oh, that's an unsafe school, that's a bad neighborhood, Baker Street, don't go near Baker Street, it's a bad place. And they're not bad, they are not bad places. My parents did school of choice for me and my sister to where we could go to a different school that was deemed safer, but ultimately it was just predominantly white, which is why it was deemed safer. The schools in Lansing had police and they were predominantly black. You put two and two together, they're not, it's not a bad area, it's not a bad neighborhood, it's not a bad school, it's a history of African Americans being criminalized. And that was one of the first things that I noticed when I checked in with myself, is me being able to have the choice to go to a different school because to my family it wasn't deemed safe. I was scrolling through Time Hop, which is like if you're going, like it shows you stuff from like years prior and like memories and old photos. It was a blackout themed football game and I crossed the line because the picture was me and my friend and our face, my face was painted black. Um, I'm not proud of it at all. I could sit here and tell you that I didn't know what it meant or the way behind it when I was 17, 18, however old I was, but that doesn't change the fact that I did it and I should have known. 
it's dehumanizing. Time does not heal racism and it sure as hell does not heal blackface and it's it inflicts this history of dehumanizing and painful racism, lynching, mass incarceration and by painting my face my face black, I fed into that and I contributed to it. And even if I said I didn't know it then, I still did it. And it does not change now that years have passed. I still did it and contributed to it. And I am here. I, I am, want to make it 100% clear that it is not okay. And it was not okay when I did it. It has never been okay. And I am so sorry. I know that sorry does not cut it. Um, but I'm so sorry for dismissing all of the oppression and hurt. And then in 2016, there was a video of me and my sister rapping Backseat Freestyle by Kendrick Lamar and I rapped the N-word. And I don't think that was my first time. It Honestly, it was not my first time saying the N-word in a song. I think I also tweeted one time like lyrics to Gold Digger, I think it was and I deleted it and then I tweeted oh apparently that's offensive um I had to take the tweet down and I I it's so ignorant for me to first of all have said a, that racial slur second to be like oh apparently it's offensive and then not have the decency to do the research and educate myself then when it happened and then in 2016 for me to sing it in a song as a white person singing the n-word I am dismissing hundreds of years of oppression and institutionalized racism it was never my place to say the n-word it never has been and it never will be or any racial slur by that matter and I stand wholeheartedly with that now I understand the weight and the history behind that. The other day, um, an account tweeted a screenshot of a tweet of mine. And I initially thought that the tweet was fake because it looked like a troll account. And when I read the tweet, I was like, that picture is not me and also, what the fuck, I would never say that. And the tweet was, once you go black, you can never go back with a photo of my friend in a face mask. And I inherently made it blackface. Um, I can't speak on behalf of my friend. It, sh it goes to show my privilege that I read that tweet and I was like, oh, I would never say that without sitting and checking in with myself to see if I actually did say it. Um, and I should have checked in with myself. Even if the tweet was old and to me it was fake. It is... I should have checked in with myself and I didn't. And I take full accountability for that tweet um and everything that I have done I don't care how long ago that it was from that tweet from 2013 to me in high school at 2015 painting my face black to the video of me rapping the n-word in 2016 it's not enough to say that I didn't know the weight of what I was doing um because it does not matter how much time has passed, what I did is inexcusable. Because it, it would be foolish of me to sit here and say, here's the only three things that I've done. I really stepped back and for me it was 2016. Um, and that in the presidential election in 2016. Um, and I hate that it even took me that long um, till I was 18 to really, really get into politics. But admittedly, like, I, it did take me that long to get into politics. And it did take me until that election. And it took a lot of deprogramming because of the way that I was raised and hearing the things, the, the, the views and beliefs of the people around me and my family. And realizing that I do not have to have those same views and beliefs, fucked up views and beliefs, and I have a voice of my own, and I have a choice of my own, and I 
chose and have chosen and will continue to choose to be on the right side of history because that is the only side to be on. There's been times where I've been reminded of the things I've said and done and I have just wanted to erase them I, and did try to erase them and delete them and act like they never happened because I never wanted it to see the light of day because I was so ashamed. But I don't, I don't want to I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. When I fuck up, I don't want to be told, oh, it's okay, it'll blow over, or you were young and dumb and didn't realize, or just delete it. That's... No. That's not how I'm going to grow from this and be the ally that I want to be. Because if I really want to be an ally, I have to earn that right. And I can't do that by pushing my past under the rug. And it would be easy for me to try and just delete it and act like it never happened. Because I can delete pictures and tweets, but deleting them does not erase the harsh reality that black people face every single day. Every single day. And they have for years and years and their ancestors and for hundreds and hundreds of years um it doesn't erase that i need to continue to educate and learn and tune into the things that i have assumed ignored or supported the saying like nobody is born racist no but we are born into a system as white people that as soon as we're born we benefit from the utmost privilege and it's about recognizing it and it's not enough to say that I'm not racist. I need to actively work to be anti-racist. I just want to say to the black community, to my followers or friends or anybody watching that I've hurt or offended, I, I know that sorry does not cut it and I know that sorry will not change what I did. Um, however, I am so, so, so sorry for my part and adding to the systemic and racist, unfair reality that you face every single day. Um, I am so sorry for, for being part of that deeply. This is, it's more than me sitting here and saying I did this and this and this, and this is why I know it's wrong. I know that I need to take accountability, um, but for me to go any further, I, this, I had to say this, this needed to be said and I needed to put it out there. Because these, these uncomfortable conversations are the most important ones to have. I'm glad that I've had these uncomfortable conversations with myself. As hard as they are, it needed to be done in order for me to truly grow and want to be the advocate that I desire to be. I... I'm, I'm going to spend the rest of my I will spend the rest of my life trying to right my wrongs and working towards making an impactful long-standing change because that is what is deserved because black lives matter and I want to make that abundantly clear um black lives matter the I do not stand with Trump, the Trump administration, or the Republican Party by any means. I don't stand with what our country was founded on and I don't support the way that African Americans have been criminalized. I don't support any of it and I want to make that clear to anybody that's watching this. That that is not who I am or who I want to be and I know that there are actions that I need to take to prove that but I am saying right now I do not condone that even if the things I've done are part of that problem. And going forward, um, and actions I'm going to take, 100% of the proceeds from my song Break Your Heart have been going directly to Color of Change, and from here on out, I will also be donating 50% of each month's royalties from grieving to a different nonprofit charity or bail fund. Um, and I want to be able to donate what I can to as many as I can. So going forward, 50% of all grieving royalty each month will be going to a different cause or organization. Um, and those are just two of the immediate steps that I'm going to be taking. Thank you for watching. Um, you didn't have to watch this. Um, yeah, I love you guys. 
with my whole heart so 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 much um and i will see you when i see you <laughs>